Hello and welcome to my review of the Yamaha LSTA guitar. Okay, um, I bought this guitar just yesterday. And um, what's great about these reviews, hopefully for you, is they're real honest reviews. Um, you know, these are my personal guitars. I'm not affiliated by any company to say that they're great if they're not great. Um, and you know, this guitar is not loaned or borrowed from any company just to do a review on it, which is hopefully going to come across as a real sort of honest review. This is my guitar. This is my choice. Uh, and I'll go through, you know, the guitars that I sort of matched it up against. Um, and then why I chose this guitar and what was the sort of the winning factor for me to pick this guitar over the other three that I tried. Um, okay, so what is this guitar? So the model of this is an LSTA, so Yamaha LSTA. It's an acoustic guitar, so six string acoustic guitar. Um, fantastic build, okay, so the build quality on this is, is fantastic. Um, this is one of the selling points really for me. Um, I'm never really a massive fan of gold hardware, but you know, I just overlooked that because of the rest of the guitar. I mean, it, it looks great with the guitar. It does, it does finish it off nicely, but I've never really been a fan of gold hardware. To me, it looks a little bit tacky. Um, so, but we'll look over, we'll, we'll glaze over that. And as I said, that's my personal preference. It's not yours. You may love a gold gold hardware on it, so you might love that. And I think, to be honest, in, in fit with the guitar, how it's what goes in with the guitar, I think it works really well. Um, it's got an ebony fretboard, okay? So real solid, solid fretboard wood. Um, it's got a spruce top, so spruce top and mahogany sides uh, and back. Um, I just think it looks stunning. That the finish is like the binding around the guitar. If you can see that there, uh, I think it just looks absolutely stunning. And um, you know, if you look at the back of the guitar as well, like the sort of the, maybe the skunk. I don't I think it's called a skunk um, strip along the middle of the guitar there. And also, it follows up through the neck of the guitar. If you can see it up here, I think it's just a stunning looking guitar, um, and a lot of guitar for the money I paid. So this is the next thing I'm going to talk about. Okay, so um, RRP on the um, on these guitars, I think it's about nine hundred and something pounds. Um, so, but no one ever pays the RRP price. Yeah, we always try and get the best deal and we all look around and shop around. Uh, exactly what I did when I sat in the shop where I bought this from, sat there, uh, while the chat was lovely chat, and he was helping me out. Um, I was looking on the internet to see if I could find the best price so they could price match, yeah? Because all these, all these shops normally price match with their guitars. Um, so if you can find a better price, you know, you'd be silly not to search online while you're in the shop to see if you can get a better price, okay? And although I'm not a massive haggler, because I hate that, and I'll get really awkward with that, um, no one wants to get home and look online and go, damn it, I could have bought that online for £100 cheaper. So, you know, just my bit of advice to you is just while you're in the shop, uh, you know, they've gone off to check the price online or whatever, you can just look on your phone and just check up and make sure, you, you know, you're getting a good price, a good fair price. Um, obviously, buying it online, you're going to get a cheaper price direct, okay? But when you go in the shop, you get that sort of service of, you know, they can talk to you a bit more about the guitar in detail, you can try it out. And you know, I would never really buy a guitar without trying it out. I don't think it's a good idea to just buy one on, you know, online without trying a guitar out. It's a real dangerous game, especially if you're spending a good amount of money that you've saved up hard to, you know, to purchase your dream guitar. You know, if you if you take a risk and you buy your guitar without even trying it, I think it's just a really, really silly risk to take because you know you, you have no idea how that guitar sounds in your hands as well. Okay, it will sound great in someone demoing it. Okay, so if someone's demoing it on a video, and I'm sure it will sound amazing because they're you know, going through all sorts of different software and different pedals and things like that to make the guitar sound great. Um, and also the player as well, you know, the player demoing the gear is normally a very proficient player. Um, so you know, just try not to, all I'm saying is try not to buy gear from just visual looking online, that'll do, pop that in the basket, that looks amazing, um, you know, because you, you may be really disappointed. And this is from just experience, I've done this myself in, in, in the past and I've learned from that mistake, okay? So back to the guitar then, so Yamaha uh, guitar, acoustic guitar, uh, this is what it sounds like, okay? So this is unplugged, okay? So nothing plugged in, this is what it sounds like. This is just a microphone that I use, this is a little Rode VideoMic Pro, um, connected up to my phone camera so you can get a real honest sound of what this guitar sounds like. I've got no expensive pencil mics, so no thousand pounds pencil mics on this guitar. This is what this guitar sounds like, straight into um, the VideoMic Pro by Rode. Okay, here we go. So it's got such a lovely, lovely tone to the guitar without even plugging it in. Um, they use a technology, I think it's called ARE, or R technology, ARE. Uh, I'm not 100% sure, it's like an acronym, I'm not sure exactly what the, that stands for, but basically I think where they sort of, very cleverly using technology, they, they age the wood um, to, to create more of a sort of matured sound, um, which I think is fa it's, it's fantastic. You know, Props to Yamaha for doing that, because it's a very, very clever thing. Um, and you know, the, the consumer, us, is just gonna get that benefit of a guitar that you know, sounds much, much more, um, you know, more matured, okay? Like a good cheese, yeah? Um, so, 
yeah, we you know we want that sound of like a you know, fifty year old acoustic will sound you know much better hopefully than a one that's just just been put together you know and and that sort of technology that can sort of age a guitar and make it sound like that sort of fifty year old acoustic I think is fantastic so it's really really great uh, and for the price of this guitar as I said I think that's a really cool feature to have with it as well um, so that's what the guitar sounds like unplugged okay so I think it sounds really really great very sort of deep and dark tone on this guitar I would say um, the other guitars as well to let you know because I did mention what the guitars I was looking at. I was looking at the Faith brand, okay, which I think is a fantastic British brand. Um, I, I love their guitars, and I have one up on the wall behind me there. Um, I think they're a great, great quality guitar, again, for the money that you pay. Um, you know, compared to like a Gibson, a Taylor, or you know, some of the high-end guitars, I think you get a lot of guitars for some of these brands like Faith and Yamaha for a lot less money, okay? So don't, don't be fooled by the, the price tag, okay? So if you see a, a Taylor guitar for 2,500 pounds, it doesn't necessarily mean it's gonna be any better for you than a 500 pound, 400 pound acoustic guitar by you know Yamaha or by Faith, okay? So this is why I'm going back to my point of just definitely go to the music shop and try them out before you make a decision. All right, so the guitars I was looking at was a Faith uh, Blood Moon, okay? So uh, I think it's a Venus Blood Moon was what it was called. Um, and that in my head was what I was thinking, right, that's what I'm gonna buy, okay? I was a little bit by looks thinking that you know looks fantastic. I love that red sort of color. Um, and the rest was that one of my students bought one and I had the chance to try it out, okay? So I did try this out. Um, and then I wanted to go to the shop and confirm that that was the guitar I really wanted to get. And then when I went to the shop, the chap said, right, just try these ever three guitars, okay? Uh, the other one was a Never Faith. I'm not sure of the exact model of that one, but it had a percussive um, uh, microphone on the guitar in underneath here, which is, which is really cool, which meant that if you're into that percussive sort of acoustic tapping on the guitar sort of sound to get a percussive sound, then that guitar was gonna be for you, you know? I'm not a massive percussive tapper. Um, I'm not. I play acoustic guitars, and I love the sound of acoustic guitar without plugging into any pedals. It just sounds amazing, doesn't it? Um, but I, I wasn't going to see that feature as very useful for me. I wasn't going to use it very much, and it might be something that I sort of it's because I have it. I would start to use that, um, and sometimes that's a good thing. Sometimes it pushes you in a different area of your playing. Uh, it also had a lot more controls on the top here. I think there's about seven or eight knobs on the top there, and to me. I don't know about you, but that just turns me off because I think it's too busy um, when I'm playing live, which I do quite a lot. Um, I can't dial that sound in quickly, and I just don't want so many knobs on top of the guitar. So this one has three knobs on the top, which I'll talk about in a little bit later, and explain what those do. Okay. So we had uh, the guitars I was picking, looking at was the uh, mainly the Faith, but it was the Faith brand I was looking at. Uh, I did try a really top end Taylor just to get the comparison, and again, the guitar was fantastic. You know, build quality and playability was absolutely second to none. But could I warrant spending 2,400, 2,500 pounds compared to the 729 that I spent on this? No, I couldn't see. I couldn't see that much of a difference. And part of me felt like I was just paying for the Taylor name on the headstock. Okay, um, and I know there's some gear snobs out there that love having that sort of Gibson, you know, Taylor on the headstock means a big thing to them. It really doesn't to me. Okay, as long as the guitar plays really well, um, you know, sounds fantastic. I really don't care what's on the headstock, okay? The guitar, as long as it's built well and I love and enjoy playing it, that's the most important thing to me, okay? So back to the guitar itself then. So you've heard it sort of unplugged. Let's plug it in and see what this sounds like, okay? So I'm um, just gonna turn that down right there and then I'm just gonna switch the amp I got in the window. Uh, the amp in the window again, so as I said, this is relating to you. So hopefully all stuff that you've got at home or you know, guitarists, beginner guitarists would have at home. I'm using a Yamaha THR10. Um, it's the, the older one, which is like the yellowy sort of goldy color. Not the brand new model, but the older one. Uh, and I've turned it to the acoustic setting on the, on the amp, on the, uh, on the t uh, THR. And um, I've dialed in a li tiny little bit of hall reverb just to give it a bit more sort of, um, you know, atmospheric sort of sound. So let's just hear what that sounds like. Again, this is straight out of the amp, straight into the microphone on the, uh, on the camera. So. Agree. Hopefully, this is coming across, but it's a, it's a lovely sounding guitar. It's a really nice, really sort of quite loud guitar, um, but very deep, bassy sort of tones from this. So not really bright. And compared to the Faith that I was trying, uh, the Faith was very the opposite end. It was very sort of um, nasally and very sort of top end and bright. And I, for me, I prefer the darker sounding guitar. Okay, uh, so this is why I, in the end I ended up choosing this one as well. So there's lots of things, lots of ticks on this. Okay. Um, 
The other thing then, so this is the real selling point for me, and this is the thing I've never heard anything like this before in my life, and I don't know if some of you guys watching this have seen this, uh, feel free to comment on the video, um, because I've not seen this before, I thought it was a fantastic technology, um, and it's this transacoustic thing. So within this guitar, there's like a speaker built in somewhere around about here, behind, um, uh, you know, behind the, uh, the bra on the bracing, connected between the bracing, there's like a little speaker, and it's picking up the sound of uh, and creating a reverb and a chorus effect, okay? So the best way to hear this, if I just turn that amp back off a second, the best way to hear this is unplugged, okay? So I am unplugged now, the amp is off, back to normal acoustic sound. So that's my normal acoustic sound, okay? So this is the best way to hear this. Now, unplugged, so no, no amp on. What I need to do now is, I have a setting on here, so the left knob on here to me, to the one closest to me, is, um, I'll just show you on the top, you can see that okay so there's only three knobs are so very very simple and when I got it there was a little bit of uh, like a sticker around there telling me what it does but it's very simple to memorize and I didn't like the sticker I thought it made it look tacky so I just pulled that off um, so yeah so the left this left knob here is gonna um, be the amount of room reverb and if I turn it to four to the right it's the amount of hall reverb okay when you get into the middle it sort of like resets itself so when you're in the middle it's just sort of basically um, you know it's the point where it changes over from the room reverb um, to the hall reverb, okay? Room reverb just being, you know, just less amount of reverb, so um, less, um, you know, decay of the reverb. So if I just turn that on on room a minute, just see if you can hear the difference. It's, it's fantastic. It's one of these things you need to experience. So definitely pop down to your music shop and try this out because s hopefully you can get the, you know, you get the sound of this. But where I'm sat here, the sound of this will sound really different to when someone sat, um, you know, opposite. And when I bought this yesterday, sat in the shop, I asked the chap who was helping me, if he could play the guitar for me, so I could sit back and listen to what it sounded like from the audience perspective. And again, I was just, that was the ticking thing for me. It ticked both boxes, it sounded great when I was playing it, and it sounded fantastic when someone else was playing it, I was listening to them play it, okay? So here we go. Okay, now amp is off, okay? I'm gonna turn this up again, so. Oh, sorry, I did forgot to turn it on, didn't I? So that's the reason why. So to turn this on, to activate this, so at the moment there's nothing, Tom. Okay, just dead same. To activate this, you just hold this down for a second or so and release it. Okay, now that's the acoustic sound, not plugged in. So I am plugged in, I know I'm plugged in here, but if I unplug that, I'm not plugged in at all. The amp is off, I've turned the amp off. This is the acoustic sound with reverb on, okay? And I'm on the, 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 the small room uh, reverb setting, so. That sound is coming out of the guitar, okay? This is the fascinating thing. I think it's amazing, you have to try one out. Um, it sounds really inspiring to play. It just livens up the sound and gives you a little bit of a blanket when you're playing, it just sounds, it sounds amazing. Um, so that's the that's the reverb. If I turn it all the way to the right, and just turn it up a bit more so you can hear it. This is the whole reverb setting. Can you hear that? Okay, so that's probably too much. I probably wouldn't have that much on. I like it about there, I found the sweet spot about one o'clock. And then the other knob, so the other knob here, the middle one, as I said, is the button to activate it. It's also the the volume knob for the direct out to the amp, okay? So if you want to turn the volume up, you've got control on the guitar here. Um, and then the other one um, is the chorus. So if I just turn that on a minute, you can hear the sound of the chorus mixed in with the reverb. <laughs> fantastic really lovely sound that is I really really enjoy playing this guitar I've sat here uh, last night I sat here for a few hours sat playing this guitar um, and that's real sort of um, you know when you get a guitar if you really want to play it for hours and then you've, you've made a good purchase yeah you really have um, and so that's the chorus on about halfway if I just turn it up a little bit more um, to my ears it gives it sort of a very 12 string sound and I liked that because if I'm ever recording or playing live I like the idea of having that ability to be able to, you know, create a sort of a 12 string sound, yeah? Um, without having a never guitar and a 12 string guitar. I really like that flexibility. Remember, you can turn it off, so if you don't want that sound on, it's not something that has to be on all the time. You can just activate it and deactivate it by that, but pressing down that button. So here, a bit more chorus so you can hear it in a bit more um, detail, so. <laughs> If I just 
turn that back off now, go back to normal guitar, so. Still got my fantastic acoustic guitar sound, but with all these little extras that really make a difference. So, yeah, that's the Yamaha guitar. Um, who's this for then, okay, because this is important. So, um, around that sort of price range, I'm guessing you're not sort of, you're not really sort of thinking beginner guitarist, okay? Uh, around that price range, that's quite an investment, I would say, sort of 800, 700 pounds, that's quite an investment. Um, you know, beginner guitarist, maybe two, three hundred, four hundred pounds maximum you probably spend on an acoustic. Uh, in this level, you're talking intermediate professional guitarist, I would say. Um, myself, I'm a professional guitarist. I play live um, every weekend. I record uh, and do lots of videos and stuff like that. So for me, this is this is this is a great thing, um, and I don't need to spend, as I said, thousands and thousands of pounds on acoustic um, because this thing does does everything for me, and it really takes all the boxes. So I guess before you go out shopping. I guess create a little, you know, tick box, could be in your head or on a bit of paper. What do you actually want that guitar to do, okay? Like, I had to sacrifice on this guitar because I loved every single part of it, apart from no cutaway, okay? And that wasn't an option, okay? So no cutaway. So that was a sacrifice for me because when I went to go and get the guitar, which was looking at the Faith, as I said, the Blood Moon, uh, that had a cutaway and I was like, right, I've got the Faith there and I, I really want a cutaway because I find it annoying when I get up here and it sort of gets become a point where I stop and I haven't got the access to the full, full amount of frets. But I sacrificed because the guitar sounded fantastic and had all the other features that I wanted. Uh, I could plug in and sounded really great plugged in. It has the extra chorus and reverb effects on, built into the guitar. So basically what that means as well, just so you understand this, it means that you know you might plug an acoustic through a pedal on the floor, through, an, through a reverb pedal into a chorus pedal and then back out to an amp or to a PA. I don't need to do that now. I, I don't need to have any pedals on the floor, no junk on the floor, no mess. I literally carry the gig bag that came with it and that's another thing I'll mention in a second. Um, I just need that on my back, and I've got all the things I need. I've got the reverb to add to the signal, and I've got the chorus to add to the signal. So that ticks a lot of boxes for me. And as I said, the gig bag, what came with it, it's not a hard case, okay? So it's not a hard case, but it's a soft hard case. Uh, it's one that you can carry on your back, so it's really convenient to carry around. And it's, it's great. You know, I haven't I haven't gigged it yet or whatever, so I'll, I'll let you know you know, in a later, maybe a later review of how I got on with it. Um, but this is just initial, you know, initial impressions of this guitar and the gig bag. It's fantastic, it's really, really great. Um, it's it's hard, it's solid, I've tried pressing it in and it's really solid. I do think it could take up to, you know, quite a good standard of sort of, you know, a bat, good bashing basically. It could probably go on a plane in the hold, I think, and survive the journey, all right? Um, I'm yet to try that yet, but if I do try that, you know, I'll let you know, hopefully the guitar don't come out back in two parts, but I believe that it probably, it would stand up to that sort of level of uh, abuse because it is really sort of solid case, all right? So, that's hopefully my real honest review of the, the, the new Yamaha guitar, the Yamaha Acoustic. As I said, I'm not affiliated by Yamaha to say this guitar is amazing. Um, if I don't like something, I just simply won't do a review of it, okay? Um, and this is my own hard-earned money that I've put down on this guitar because I really believe it's a fantastic acoustic, okay? So thanks for watching, guys, and feel free to pop to your local music shop to check one of these out. See you soon. Cheers.